Armstrong has often said that U.S. postal strategy was almost completely made to make the race as difficult as possible for Ulrich. Still, the German ended up second in three of Armstrong's wins, and Ulrich was third in his two worst tours. He has only finished outside of the podium once, and six out of eight times he completed in the top two in Tour de France. That is a record only Bernard Hinault and Jacques Anquetil can beat. Ulrich only won the Tour once, but it was the biggest winning gap after Laurent Fignon's second win in 1984, and there has not been a higher win since Ulrich in 1997. It is the most superior Tour win in the past 36 years. Sometimes people seem to forget how good Ulrich was. People are underrating his level because they were dissatisfied that he couldn't beat Lance and never got a career like Merckx, who thought Ulrich was the greatest talent ever. He did not end up as successful as one could have hoped, but his tour stats are still great, to be honest. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Cycling Right Now, where we bring you the battle between Lance Armstrong versus Marco Pantani. But before we begin, make sure you subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon so you don't miss any of our amazing videos. And let's begin. In 2000, one of the most historical Tour de France stage races took place on Mont Ventoux. The brutal mountain saw Marco Pantani and Lance Armstrong battle it out for the stage win. The battle between the two men has become legendary in cycling oral history, although later each man's career would be ruined by drug use and Pantani tragically died a few years later, there can be no doubt that this contest between the two men is one that will be remembered for generations to come. Armstrong had won the Tour de France the last year, which was the beginning of his seven-year reign at the top. He had already become famous for his attacking style of riding and was appraised to be a real contender to win the tournament, which he later did. The Texan would be admired as one of the finalist cyclists of all time until knowledge of his drug use surfaced. In 1998, Pantani won both the Giro d'Italia and the Tour de France and was admired to be one of the best climbers of his generation. He is one of only a few cyclists to win both tours in the same year. A year later, Pantani would be disqualified from the Giro d'Italia due to having uneven blood values. Later, Pantani admitted to using cocaine. It is believed that this drug was behind his mistimed death in 2004. With the summit in sight, the Pantani was in the lead and breaking from the pack. If you were watching the first round, you could be forgiven for thinking he had it in the bag. Armstrong held the lead for the final kilometers of the race. When you thought Pantani was out of it, he would reappear, pursue down Armstrong's back wheel. Armstrong answered, pulling away from Pantani, but the Italian attacked again, always staying on the wheel of Armstrong as the two addressed the summit. With Armstrong apparent to have the race won, Pantani snatched the stage win. After the race, it came to light that Armstrong gave Pantani the victory. Speaking in the press, he said, I felt that it was like a gift on Ventoux, and it was also a fault to give the gift. He is a great rider, but he was not the best over Ventoux. At the time, I thought that I was doing the right thing, but since I have been dispirited by his attitude and declarations, I respect him as a rider. The last 12 months have been bad for him, and the way the other day he came back twice and attacked was commendable. This year, stage 12 of the Tour de France begins in Montpellier and completes on Mont Ventoux. This stage of the race is held on French National Day and will see the riders finish at the summit of the Giant of Function. When they reach this point, they would have ridden 185 kilometers. After Chalet Reynard, the weather can be radically different from what you experienced when you began your ascent. The riders in the Tour de France will be grateful once they reach the top, especially if they bust their personal times. For these riders, the finish of the Tour de France is still nine states away. Riding Ventoux with Sport Active is a memorable experience. It is a real opportunity to emulate the cycling heroes you would have watched in the Tour de France and take on the mountain that every professional regard. During your Ventoux conquest, we support you like a professional rider from using a support car carrying supplies and spare parts to Martin and his team riding with you as you mount to the summit from two sides. You also have the chance to ride some thrilling roads in Provence, France, which are also used in the Tour de France and Paris-Nice races. So why the smooth mountain is so hard to ride? Microclimates, the gradients, and the terrain have beaten the best cyclists in the world. So what kind of spirit do you need to ride the mountain the professional terror? You need to have a warrior's heart to extend the summit of this beast. Every kilometer you ride is a kilometer you have vanquished. This belief will keep you going when every fiber in your soul will yell at you to stop. Vontu has a way of defaulting your skin like no other climb. The landscape and weather have inspired philosopher quotes. Vontu often feels like it is ridiculing you. You are a mere mortal trying to defeat an omnipotent god. 
This god will reveal your cycling weaknesses within a few kilometers. You will soon know whether your Vontu experience will be kind or brutal. Either way, you have to have the mindset to climb the varmint. Keep going when your legs feel like they are going to blow up when the heat is stifling and the wind is whipping about your face. It is not for the faint of heart. Taking on Vontu means you have to have put in the training hours, ideally taking on as many inclines as you can. You have to be fit and you have to have a good idea of treading. Vontu is known for riders that come out of nowhere when decreasing. This can make descending dangerous chiefly as riders say they have hit 100 kilometers per hour. The pro riders have more than played their part in creating Vontu and Vontu has played its part in making them. Bear this in mind as you locate some of the riders who are remembered for their Vontu experience. Vontu was primarily used as part of the Tour de France in 1951. The route was not a summit finish but past the summit. Lucien Lazride was the first man that year to reach the summit and he accomplished a podium finish overall in the tournament. In 1958, Mont Ventoux was then used as a summit finish in the Tour de France. Goual was an accomplished cyclist and before being the first man to win a summit finish on the Bald Mountain, had previously won the Giro d'Italia two years earlier, a race he win again in 1959. After winning stage 18, he earned the good name Angel of the Mountains. He would win four other stages in the 1958 Tour de France, conclude victory in the race. He was the fastest recorded and would last another 31 years before Jonathan Vauters strike it in the Dauphine Libère. The fastest recorded time to reach the summit of Mont Ventoux is held by Iban Mayo, who outreaches the top in 55 minutes 51 seconds in 2004 during the Criterium de Dauphine Libère. He was two minutes forward of Tyler Hamilton and Lance Armstrong. Although he showed promise and attained major stage victories in the sport, he tested positive for doping in 2007 and was given a two-year ban. He decided not to return to the sport after the ban and former. In 1967, Briton Tom Simpson arduously died while trying to reach the summit in the 13th stage. During the stage, he came off his bike but carried on riding the mountain only to fall down and die a few miles later. A post-mortem showed he had high alcohol and amphetamine levels and was suffering from stomach pain. The humid temperatures combined with the demands of the climb are all believed to have played a part in the man's death. Simpson was described to be under pressure from his manager to finish the stage and do well in the Tour de France. Simpson rode against the guidance of his teammates who wanted him to quit. There is a statue of him on Mont Ventoux close to the spot where he died. And that's for today's video. We sincerely hope you enjoyed the video. If so, give it a like and share it with your friends and family. Let us know if you have any questions or comments in the section below. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to see more of our incredible videos. You can also watch our other videos that have been specially selected for you. Look forward to seeing you in our next video.